Hello, world. Great Giza Pyramid. I've been recently asked um, what got me to where I am today on the pyramid. And I'd like to say I <clears throat> first started by listening to uh, Christopher Dunn and his talks on the pyramid. And I really listened to the facts about the dust that they found and how it was equivalent to the black powder that they found here and how when the people broke through, they found the black powder and some of them actually died from a formulation and just paid attention to the facts. Um, worked, uh, watched what he did um, and, and how he spun off uh, the gentleman, John Cadman, and how he visioned a, uh, a flapper valve down here or a pressure valve which would allow flow to come through and it would put a stop and that stop would put a back pressure which would put a flapper which would extend water up into the into the pyramid and while that was cool and wonderful the problem is those features don't exist and hence this isn't what it did and uh, but luckily he took a lot of pictures and I paid attention to it and one thing I uncovered is that there were two granite rocks on there and how they were anomalies in there and where they were positioned and then I worked my way up until to the grotto and I got as many pictures as I could of the grotto and read what I could on the grotto and what elevations things are at and how it is stop valve for different gases and waters and how pressure can't go one way and can go another way and blah 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 and it, it's a very well designed little room so it's, it's well thought out and engineered and then I looked at what could have been and at first I envisioned the gas somehow coming out of the subterranean chamber here and going directly up to the top of the king's chamber what they like to call the king's chamber um, and I went with that for a while but then when I really got into it you discovered that they came out of here and out of the the holes that are drilled in the southern wall that they say were for hiding scrolls which I really highly doubt but I'm going with the fact that there are still holes drilled in the southern wall and that is where the hydrogen got out of the system to go up to the upper areas and work into the system and I, I went with that and I'm still going with with that. Oh, and, and at, at first I thought the oxygen came up. And that's why I thought this, is that this was the oxygen this was the hydrogen. But that, that's not the case, and because of the way the room is engineered and how stuff goes, this is the hydrogen, it's the hydrogen that's brought up there. The oxygen is just a byproduct. They don't care about the oxygen from down here because they take the oxygen from out here. You know, it's out here. 21% oxygen out here. And that's what's brought into the system. So they don't have to worry about getting the oxygen up. The oxygen's already up. So, and that's where they bring them back together. And you get the hydrogen and the oxygen back together, bring the water that comes back down. Now, uh, everything was kind of good there. And then I've really looked into it and thought about it. And one thing I was really overlooking is, yes, it brings in 21% oxygen but it also brings in, what is it, 78% uh, nitrogen. So that is also at play in this mixture. And that's kind of where I'm working right now to try to figure out how the whole system works, if it kind of keeps the nitrogen out of the system, or if the nitrogen is actually at play in the form of ammonia or something within the system, and uh, how that really comes to play. And then I'm also focusing on how the other two of the larger pyramids and focusing on their elevations of their quarries of water, how, how this has a quarry right here, and at what elevations they play at. Because remember, the whole thing is round, so got to kind of focus on the elevation, not straight lines. So uh, thank you, and um, please follow me through my journey.